This is Halloween, and today is a very exciting day. We will be recreating Bjuk's swan dress from the 73rd Annual Academy Awards, March 25th, 2001. A very controversial look at the time. Let's get started. For this look, I have quite a bit of stuff. I have a pair of Mary Jane sandals I bought from J. Adams Shoes online. They were 26 bucks. They look expensive, but they're not. Now on this costume, I spent a little bit more than I normally do because I couldn't quite find all the stuff I needed at the thrift store. Doesn't mean you won't. So when I'm going over certain items, I'll kind of tell you what you would look for if you were shopping at the thrift store for these items. And you can get it a lot cheaper if you shop at the thrift store. But for me, this is probably going to be one costume that I'm going to hold on to because it's just going to be so cool. I think um, I'm not going to be repurposing it for anything I don't think so for me it's kind of worth a little bit of extra money so but anyway um so those are the shoes this is the wig now this is a human hair wig when I bought it you know it looked longer when I saw it online I believe I got it on eBay and it was around $20 for a human hair wig that's quite a steal I got it and it was very disheveled <laughs> kind of just looking like an old rocker dude it didn't have bangs cut. I cut bangs. What's cool about the human hair wigs is that you can actually style them to look however you want. So I really like that about the human hair wigs. And it wasn't long enough. Since it wasn't long enough, I went ahead and bought one of these falls. I don't know if you've ever seen, well, back in the 90s or early 2000s, I believe it was, Daisy Fuentes was selling these falls that you just kind of, it's kind of like a hair band that you put on, on over your hair and it makes your hair look longer. So that's what I'm going to use just to kind of make it look longer. I have a flesh tone top, mesh top, see-through. Any color that's, that matches to your flesh tone, that's not a hard find. This was about $20 as well online. I already had this piece here that I'm going to wear underneath the side of the dress that has the swan head, which she had a nude illusion sort of thing going on behind the swan head and on the other side was covered with the the body of the swan. I'm going to show you how to do all of that. Uh, for pantyhose, I have these beautiful jeweled pantyhose, uh, again in a nude color. Uh, these were my mom's and they are so beautiful, but they're going to look great with this costume. And I'm probably going to be adding some jewels to the flesh tone top as well. Um, just some kind of like stick on rhinestones. I just have some kind of laying around, so I was going to add some to that. This is just a white jumper. It was brand new. I bought this at the thrift store for $10. It's a small petite. I'm not small or petite, so but it does have an elastic waistline, so I wasn't really too worried about it. I hope it works just fine. What's cool about this is that it's already um, kind of separated, so I'm going to have to cut half of it off and then just sew or glue where you know the other half is. So kind of half of the work's done for me just because of the way it's made. So I'm going to be cutting half of this off. Um, it's not going to really matter. It's going to be covered up pretty much by the swan and the ruffles and all of that. I just wanted something that I could wear underneath my petticoat that I bought here. Um, white petticoat I got online um, for $10 I believe on eBay. So worth it. It's a nice big fluffy one and I wanted to have as many ruffles as possible. Um, I went ahead and bought some uh, white Velcro just in case we need it. It's good to have on hand anyway if you don't have white Velcro and you make costumes or you want to start. Velcro in white is a great thing to have on hand. I got one piece of black felt, just a square of black felt. These are less than a dollar at the store. If you go to Michael's or Joann's, I bought these from Joann's. Um, this one is just a regular black felt. This one was on sale on clearance for 97 cents. They took two cents off for me, so that was really nice of them. <laughs> Three cents, whatever. This one has a backing, like an, a self-adhesive backing on it. So I thought that that would be helpful in making the swan beak. I bought this beautiful fabric that I think is going to work really good for like the ruffly texture of the top of the dress. I bought a yard and a half of this material. It was not on sale, but Joann Fabrics always has like deals online. You've got to download the app. You can get a 40, 60% off coupon for this. If you don't want to spend that kind of money, it is so easy usually to find in the thrift stores some kind of dress, even if it's like a, um, a little girl's communion dress or anything like that, something that has white ruffles or a white ruffly texture. You can find that at the thrift store all the time. It's just I didn't get lucky this time and I was tired of driving around. So I just went to Joann's. I found this gorgeous fabric. It is uh, $30 a yard and I got a yard and a half. So, but I got a 20% off. I had a 20% off coupon. So you do not have to do it this way. You can make your own ruffles out of tool. You can, um, tool is very cheap. You go and buy a bunch of tool. You can bunch it up and connect it, you know, 
to your existing pieces and it'll look like you want it to look. So just any way you wanna do that. Now, if you remember this, if anybody watched my Smurfette video, there's about 4,000 of you out there that did. This is leftover material from my, um, when I made the hat for my Smurfette costume. So I'm gonna use this to make the swan's neck and for the, the beak and everything, I'm using this orange and black felt. I got some small round buttons for the eyes of the swan, and I also bought some kind of wide, what inch and a half elastic for the top of my ruffly skirt that I'm going to add to the top of this uh, crinoline so that um, we can just ruffle it up. And then that's it for what you'll be needing for the costume. Of course, you're going to need your fabric cutting scissors to get a straight edge on any fabrics you might be cutting. You don't want a lot of frayed edges and such. So you can get those uh, at Joann's or any fabric store or fabric uh, department, Walmart has one. You can get uh, fabric cutting scissors there for you know maybe 10 to 12 bucks. Oh, can't forget, we also have a plastic, a large plastic egg. So another reason why I wanted to do this costume now, one, the Academy Awards or took place in March, so it's kind of fitting for the time of year. Another reason is it's not hard to get your hands on a very large plastic egg. When Björk debuted this look on the red carpet, she laid an egg. <laughs> So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taping this shut because it doesn't really match up, but taping this together and I'm going to be paper macheing over it. That's what my plan is for the egg here. So as with any costume that you're going to be doing, you want to do all of the parts of this costume that are going to take the longest. If you have something like paper mache that needs to dry, you want to do that first. And if you have something that you have to paint that needs to dry, do that first. Anything like that, you want to definitely get out of the way first so that it's all ready to go when you're done with the costume. I've got my plastic egg here. Uh, I would advise if you're not going to paper mache the egg uh, to at least tape it because you're gonna be laying the egg with the costume and these eggs come apart very easily if they hit the ground and might even crack. So I would advise taping it if you don't want to paper mache it so it will spray paint with no problem. We've done paper mache before in my previous video where we were doing the Statue of Liberty. I do it very simple. I do it with standard all-purpose flour. Everybody has that at their house or should have it. If you make gravy or cakes or cupcakes or anything that requires flour, you should have it. So you're gonna make it to where it's like almost like a paste consistency. Um, Kind of just doing it real quick here. I always do flour and water just because it's, I always have it, you know, it's not something I have to go out and buy special. It's already here. I usually already have newspaper. This newspaper I actually bought. I think it's like the Wall Street Journal or something. Only good for paper mache these days. Nothing good in there. <laughs> yeah, about that consistency, that's pretty good. It's kind of like glue, actually. Paste is a little more dry. You want it kind of like a glue consistency, and that's perfect. I've got my little pieces here from the Wall Street Journal, and uh, I've got my egg. I also cut a paper bowl so I can set my egg in there to dry. Paper bowls, if you don't have them around, as you could see from my previous video, Statue of Liberty. You can use paper bowls for a lot of things. Making costumes. I just, it's something that I love. I'm just gonna have around all the time because they're just good for a lot of stuff. So, so that my egg can sit in there and kind of dry. That's what I did. So let's go ahead and start doing this. This is nice and wet. That's what you want. That's what she said. Just kidding. I don't even have to hardly try. It's it's good and clumpy and wet and it's gonna stick just nicely. You do want both sides on this. You know, make sure you're getting both sides of the paper so that it sticks down to your egg really well. And you're just going to do that. You know, just keep doing that until the egg is completely covered. I know I'm stating the obvious here, but like I said, this is for beginners and stuff. It's not necessarily, this channel is not, was not made for professionals. <laughs> if you're a professional and you're watching and you're just entertained by it, then that's fine. But I made this so that everybody can learn how to do costumes and because it's it's brought me so much joy in my life that I wanted to um, share it with others, you know? And we need a little joy right now in the world. If it's nice and gloopy on there, you may not even have to, you know, keep dipping it. You know, you'll just dip your hands in the... Like I said before, you're, you're gonna get your hands messy, so... So yeah, that's what we're gonna do until the whole egg is covered. And uh, when that's all done, I'll kind of show you how it looks. Here is the finished product, our egg. All paper mache and ready to be painted. You want it to be real dry. It can't be even a little bit damp or it's not gonna spray paint. Now, 
you don't have to do this like I did it. I'm sure this time of year, Michael's or any craft store has already made paper mache eggs if you want to go that route. You can do it however you want. You don't have to have an egg at all. It's totally optional. So I'm just going to spray it. I've got some white spray paint here. Gotta shake it up real good. I'll show you what that looks like when we get done. My egg is all done and painted. I added a bit of white glitter, totally optional. You don't have to do that. And then I put some clear coat on it just to give it a little more character. You'll notice that there's, you know, it's not the prettiest job. It's not 100% smooth. I really didn't mind the extra texture, but if you want yours to be smooth, you're just gonna use smaller pieces of paper. You're not gonna have those edges that won't curve around. So it'll just take a little bit longer. And since I, I'm trying to kind of work on a schedule here, I wanted things to go a little bit faster. I used larger pieces to cover more surface area. It's going to be fine for pictures. I've cut some extra pieces here. Just some random. They're not any particular shape. Some pieces off my leftover material that I had. I'm just going to glue them at the bottom of the egg willy-nilly. <laughs> and it's gonna, they're going to kind of hang off the egg off the bottom of the egg. So I'll show you what that looks like. So this is my finished egg. You can see how the pieces just kind of hang off of it. And that's how hers was. You're not like gluing it to the egg per se all the way. You're just letting some pieces kind of hang off of it. I guess it's supposed to look like afterbirth. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if eggs have that. I think that was her way of thinking anyway, but there it is. So I've got my felt laid out here. As you can see, it's just one long strip, about a foot uh, wide and about a yard, a little more than a yard, a yard and a quarter of material that I had left over from, uh, from when I was Smurfette and I made the Smurfette hat. I think it's going to work. What I do is I'm always, I'm constantly uh, referencing a photograph online of the actual dress and the look that I'm going for. So I'm going to draw a pattern of just the swan neck. It doesn't go down into a body or anything like that. It's very much actually like a mink stole. Um, if you've ever seen a mink stole or a collar, a mink collar, where it's just wrapping around the neck just far enough to keep the neck warm, really. Um, but that's what it is. It's, it's going to be a collar. Now you notice that the head of the swan is pretty big. So I'm going to cut a pattern for that and I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. So you will notice, and I always say cut a pattern rather than draw a pattern for some reason, but I meant draw a pattern. So I drew a pattern out. I went a little bit short here so I just lengthened it a little bit. It's not going to show because we're going to be sewing from the inside and flipping it outward just like we did with the Smurfette hat if you watched that video. But we're going to be doing basically that. We're going to be stuffing it as well. You can buy polyfill for that if you want to. I have cotton balls so that's what I'm going to use to stuff the neck. So all I'm going to do is cut this out now and I'm going to put it on the other side over here and trace the pattern onto the other side. And then I'm gonna cut double. I'm gonna cut them both out and then it'll be time to sew it together. Also, since you are going to be stuffing it, you wanna go a little wider with your pattern. So if you want the neck to be about that thick, I mean, you're gonna go a little bit bigger. Just however however um, thick you want it, you're gonna have to go bigger with the pattern that you draw. Because if you only do about an inch, you're stuffing it, it's gonna look like a snake instead of a swan neck. So you wanna keep that in mind as well. So I have my pattern here now. Uh, it's not lined up perfectly. I can trim a little bit off if I want to. It's not really a big deal. I'll go ahead and trim it off just to show you. You'll see that I, I've cut out my swan neck and it is two-sided. So I'm gonna flip it to where the ugly part's on the inside and match them up that way. Then we're gonna be sewing from the inside. And what we're gonna do, once we match it up, we're just gonna be sewing the as outer edge as you can get of the swan neck, all the way around on the inside and then on the outside. Don't close up your end because we still have to stuff it. So here is what it looks like all sewn together. And now I'm just gonna turn it inside out, which is gonna be a daunting task because I needed to put something in to pull it but it'll be all right, we'll get it done. And I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I had flipped it right side in so that none of the marks that we made will show. And then I'm just going to stuff the entire net with cotton balls. 
Now, I want it to be a little larger. I'm gonna work on fixing the size a little bit once I get it stuffed. And I think I'm going to pedal the felt and uh, hot glue the pedaled felt onto the neck so that it's more textured and realistic looking. So I want it to extend my head a little bit so it'll come a little further around my neck and also make the head a little bigger. So I just cut another pattern, two-sided of course. I'm gonna sew the inside or the ugly side and flip it right side in and attach it uh, to the top of the head here so that the swan's head would be bigger. So it'll be more like that, a little longer, almost touching the other side. You can do it right the first time <laughs> if you want. You just make a larger pattern. So this goes to show that even though my lines were really wide on the pattern that I drew, once you stuff it and everything, it's going to bring it in quite a bit. So if you want a thicker bird, <laughs> you're going to have to draw a, a wider pattern. I've extended my head the way I wanted it. I've started stuffing it. I've made these little petals with my leftover felt. I'm just going to like do that. You want to offset them, kind of like a bricklay, just to add some texture to this one. I'm just going to do that. So you're going to have to cut a bunch of them if you do that. That's totally optional. You don't have to to do that i'm just gonna do it for my swan um you could always add a plush material if you want it to be like fuzzy or you can add feathers or whatever you want to make your swan cool you know i don't have any white feathers i'd probably use white feathers too that'd look cool but just to kind of give it a little bit more of a realistic feel you can see here i've started placing my petal i'm gonna do a row just to show you what i'm doing the petals I mean, if you're cutting them out of felt, it's gonna take you a little bit. You don't wanna go too close to the previous petals because it'll take forever. You wanna go kind of almost the full length. Just place them on like that, just right in a row, just like that. And you're gonna do it this way for no matter what medium you're using. If you're using feathers, maybe not if you're using fur or uh, like a plush material. If you're doing that, you'll just uh, kind of wrap it around and glue it on. But if you're using petals like this, or if you're using, you could even use white flower petals would probably look good. You're gonna do it just like this and go in a row and just stick them to it. Should look really good. And I'm gonna do this all the way around the neck until I get right about to here, because that's where it's gonna go into the dress. So I cut a little pattern for the top bill and it's kind of a heart. This is just going to be the top bill. Now just to check it out. See how that's going to go just like that. And it's fine if it's a little big because you can trim it down. So you're going to do like a little heart for the bottom. And I wanted to do that first to see how I was going to need my black to be because they do have a little black that goes over the top. And it's kind of like, like the heart has a flat top haircut. Kind of like that is what you're going to cut. Once you have your heart, you'll be able to do that. We do want to glue it down to the white part, so we are going to need it to be a little larger. And it doesn't really matter how you cut it because it's going to be behind the heart. So it should look like that. And that's going to go like that. But it'll, be, it'll look like that. You just want to get it all glued down once you have it the way you want it. And then I'll do that. And then we'll do the bottom. And then we have to sew on our eyeball. All right. I'm just doing the bottom beak here. Basically, you did the top kind of a heart shape. You're going to do the bottom kind of a heart shape. D. Moment of truth. Um, I'm pretty sure it's perfect. I think my swan's going to have a bit of an underbite. Hope you can see that. It's hard to like be the videographer and the person in the video as well. <laughs> Looks pretty good. I'm going to just trim her up. That's my swan mouth. Looks pretty good. Once I put the eyeball on, I think it's going to be good. So that's the face. You can either sew or hot glue an eyeball on. And I have round buttons that I bought for that. And that's going to go right here in the black part. So I have my swan head and it looks cool. I'm going to finish pedaling and then I'll show you what that looks like and we'll move on to the dress. My swan neck is complete. It looks amazing. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. And what I did, I just finished stuffing the end part here. We're gonna be covering that with material and it's gonna go into the skirt of the dress. So don't even worry about how that looks. I just finished stuffing it with the cotton balls and I hot glued it. And then all the material is gonna be covering that up. So that's it, that's the finished product, pretty awesome. I just did the petals basically on the front. There's some kind of in the back down by where the face is. But if you want to go all the way around, you can. You won't be seeing the, the back because it'll be around my neck. And that's how it's gonna go. You do not have to get a jumper like this, but I'm going to be cutting off this, this half here, kind of like 
like that or no probably straight down the back but leaving this leaving just the one side and the one side will be you know properly finished and everything so it'll look nice as you can see I've cut off the other side and I've cut off the sleeve here and I'm going to just to finish it up I'm going to fold the edge the um the lace edge around and hot glue it so that it has a more finished look there's not going to be any sewing here I don't think it's necessary I'm going to do the same with the back that I cut off there's a little bit of lace kind of hanging over the edge I'm just going to fold it over um, and hot glue for a straight edge and then this is great um, this is my nude illusion mesh top that I bought and what I did because hers had rhinestones so I have a bedazzler I know everybody probably doesn't have a bedazzler at home so I put on some stones uh, with the bedazzler if you want to do the same you can buy some um, rhinestones at Michaels or wherever whatever craft store you have they can be glued on as well you can hot glue them on or you can even use a uh, fabric glue or anything like that and glue them on um, but since I had the bedazzler that's that's what I ended up doing all right, so this is the finished product. You can see how I've hot glued around the edges so that it's a nice finished product. And then I just hot glued the back as well. Just hot glued it in so that, you know, it'll look nice and finished on the back side. And that's that part. Now we'll start working on the skirt. And what we're going to do, we're going to measure around your waist. Now you want to make sure that you are, you know, wearing probably nothing, you know. Take off your bottoms, whatever you're wearing, or whatever you're wearing, your dress, and just measure your around your waist. You're going to make it just a little bit bigger because we do have the crinolines to go over. Account for that. Measure around your waist and just about a half an inch more than what you need. And you should be good. We're also going to be covering it with material. So I now have my waistband here. I made it a little bit bigger so that I could, you know, wrap material around it and it goes around me easily. I I'm also going to have the jumpers going to be underneath it. So I want it to have a little bit extra room. I don't want it to be real tight around my body. Just um, what I did was just a simple stitch. If you don't have a sewing machine, I just simple stitched it together. I made like a Z with the stitching. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but what I'm going to do is I have my beautiful fluffy wedding material here with the sort of little roses on it that's going to look more like feathers when we're done. And I think I have enough of the edge that has nothing on it to wrap it around the, um, the elastic here. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna wrap it around the elastic and sew it on. And just go all the way around, bring it around, and sew it at the bottom. It's not gonna really matter if there's a little bit of plain part at the top, because I have a plan to cover that as well. So for now, I'm just gonna go all the way around with extra, I believe, so I'm just gonna do that. and put it on over my crinoline. And if you noticed in the pictures, I cut it kind of like a triangle. I just cut the uh, the corners off so that it'll make a circle pattern when I add on the other piece. Uh, the other piece is down there. So since I have this on, what I want to do now is I want to take and cut where I want it to be, as short as I want it to be, and a little bit longer than I want so that I'm, I'm going to probably you know, glue him it with hot glue. And um, that's that. That's how that is so far. Now I'm just going to, uh, like I said, cut it and I'll show you where I'm at um, once we go to the next step. hot glue hem on the entire fabric all the way around every rough edge so you don't have to you, if you have a sewing machine you know how to use it by all means if you want to hand sew by all means but this is just how I did it and with this particular costume it's it you don't I mean the hot glue actually adds to it because hot glue is stiff and this is a standout sort of dress so because you're not needing it to be sleek or flat and it can actually stand out the hot glue is just a quick way to get it done and it works well so this is how I did this this is just the excess part of the material that was left over after I made this skirt and I made this little thing to go around 
It also covers up the bottom of the swan there, covers that up. So I'm going to bring it around me. And then I added Velcro in two places. So there's Velcro right under the swan, right? Well, let me just show you. Right there under the swan. So when I bring it around, there's where it attaches right here to the other Velcro. And I'm just going to attach that. Voila. And then I've got another piece of Velcro right here. This is just going to make it a little more fitted. And that goes there. And just with a little bit of placement here, just like that, we have our our completed swan dress and I just love it. I love the way these are kind of, they kind of look like wings coming around and hugging me. Hers was kind of just one, you know, just a big cascade of ruffles. Every time I do a costume, mine's a little different, of course. It's not the original, but it looks good and I'm just really pleased with the outcome. It's makeup time and for Bjuk, for her look, we're going to go pinky with that. Uh, the eyeshadow is going to be pink, the blush pink, and a nice pink lipstick. And then we're going to do a little bit of a cat eye with a twist. Uh, I'm going to try and reshape my eyes a little bit and my eyebrows as well. Uh, for the lipstick, I've got Mother by Kat Von D. It's just a pink lipstick. She did a very almost natural look for the 2001 Academy Awards. That's what we're going to be doing today. Just a little bit of pink and highlighting. And of course, I've got some eyelashes. They weren't on lockdown. I guess it's because it's not Halloween. So I lucked out with that. Um, these are just regular Ardell naked lashes. You know, nothing crazy. Bjork, as we know her here in America, um, is an Icelandic pop star. And she wasn't always a pop star. She actually started in music at age five. Her parents were very musical as well. So they put Bjork in a classical music school at age five. By age 11, she had made her first album. And her first album was um, like a traditional Icelandic music album. So we'll get started with our makeup and we'll talk a little bit about Bjork on the way uh, to our look. Bjork is the proper way to pronounce it. It's just hard to say bjucks, <laughs> you know, like plural or, you know. I've already done all my concealer on my face and I powdered my face since we know what that looks like. What I'm gonna try and do now is reshape my brow a little bit so that it looks a little more like hers. Hers are a little more bushy than what I've got going on. I started plucking too early in life and they just never quite came back. So I'm going to just kind of reshape if my eye, my eyebrow to kind of look like hers. So now I just got to kind of blend it as well. And I do have a picture of her nearby so I can kind of use it for reference. You always want to have a picture of whoever it is you're trying to portray. It's just going to help you be that much more accurate. Now I don't look Icelandic. I actually have zero ethnic qualities about me. I just look plain old American. I don't have any like an almond shape to my eye. I don't have full lips. I don't have a, you know, big nose. All these features I think are beautiful on the people that they're on. I'm just pretty basic. So anytime I have to look like someone else, it can be a daunting task, but I do the best I can. As you can see, I'm making my eyebrow thin thicker. Um, I just, they're kind of straight across. There's not really much of an arch there. Hers are kind of straight across. So in doing this, I'm gonna have to blend a lot. So I don't look like Dr. Paul Bearer. Now the pictures are gonna be taken from a distance. So I'm not real concerned about them looking too crazy. They'll look good enough for the pictures. So here's kind of where we're going with the eyebrows. Kind of, um, it's a lot thicker than my usual. And I'm just gonna try and draw some very thin hair like parts coming out of my brow. So I don't know how well you can see that. That's kind of like where we're going. So I'm gonna do my other one off camera. So I've done for the most part my brows here. Just wanted to share with you something you may have around is a precision pen, a black precision pen. If you wanna make like little hair, you know, with the precision pen to make it look more natural, it's a really good tool for that. It's really like kind of like the only thing I use precision pen for. My uh, eyeliner is usually a brush. This is a Kat Von D precision pen. So I'm just making some little hairs. She's she's the natural look, you know. My brows are like plucked and waxed to death. But she's got the... When Bjuk made her first album, 
debut at age 11, she was very successful, sold a lot of albums there in Iceland and the record label wanted her to do more albums and more of the traditional Icelandic music and Bjerk basically turned them down because she said she wasn't interested in that. She felt it dishonest because her name was on the album and it wasn't her own work. So she wanted to do her own work. Fast forward to the punk rock revolution, you know, when all the punk rock was going on. So, um, you know, the late 80s and early 90s, she really got into that sound and she became the lead singer of the Icelandic punk band, The Sugar Cubes. So um, that was really her introduction to more of her own work and being able to be creative in her own right. So I've got my brows done. Now I'm going to, I'm just going to use the same pink that I'm using for my blush on my eyelids and not real dark, not real heavy, just a light pink on the eyelid. Mm. So that's basically where we're going with that. Just a light stroke across. It looks like it's a little darker on me because my brush still had darker color in it from my ghost tour last weekend. I'm gonna do my other eye. The sugar cubes lasted for a bit. They were together, they got together in 86 and disbanded in 1992. And in 1993, Bjerk's first solo album was released. So she didn't waste any time getting to the solo stuff. And ever since, she's just been an icon in music, really globally. Her sound is just so unique. She's the most adorable thing you'll ever see, like on stage, the way she performs and her childlike innocence and nature about her and the way she just kind of dances lightly on her feet. She's just an amazing performer and probably one of the best vocalists of all time. In fact, I believe Rolling Stone named her number 32 in top female vocalists of all time. So she's pretty outstanding. In 2000, her first movie was released, Dancer in the Dark. And if you haven't seen it, it's it's special. It's different. It's unlike anything you would ever see. So the parts with the dialogue in it are very much the quality of what like a home movie would be. But there's these wonderfully executed, choreographed parts that are done to Bjerk's music, a lot of which you can find on her Greatest Hits album. But the songs and the music and the way it's choreographed and the way it just pulls on your heartstrings, it's an epic tale of a mother who is blind, but wasn't always blind. She had a some kind of um, illness that left her blind later in life. And she is just a factory worker. She doesn't have a lot of money. She's a single mother raising a, a, one son. And she finds out that her son has the same disorder or the same illness that's going to one day make him blind. So she starts saving away money and you kind of see the struggle that she's having just hoping that she's going to get enough money for her son to have this surgery done so where he never has to go blind like she is. And it's just very touching if you get a chance to watch it or if you want to see it. It's um it's kind of a slow moving film. I I will say that up to a certain point and then it kind of starts to get on the roll. So it takes a while. It's not like a lifetime movie where it has you hooked in the first 2 minutes like my dad would say. <laughs> It's not like that. You have to wait a bit for it to start gaining ground and for um, things to start happening in the film, but it's it's very, very good and I recommend you watch it. The Swan Dress was debuted on the red carpet for that film and at the time, the Swan Dress was very controversial. Now, the Academy Awards and the Oscars and all this, they've always had kind of strict rules up until a certain point and then obviously these days they just don't care anymore. It kind of broke all the rules and she even laid an egg there on the red carpet, which is why we did the egg. And it's been parodied in many comedy shows. I think SNL parodied it. Um, it's been parodied by the likes of Ellen DeGeneres, Kevin James, and many, many others. So the dress really made a statement such that people just still talk about it today, even though it's 20 years later. That's why we're doing the swan dress. It's, a, it's an epic thing and a part of history now. So um, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with my eyeliner here. Or Bjerk, I want to go up in the front and kind of follow the, the line down and have the point downward to sort of try and reshape my eyes a little bit. I've done it before and it seemed to have worked. I'll kind of show you what that looks like because I don't have that shape of eye. I I thought I'd try something and I did as I was studying the shape of Bjerk's eye. It's an almond shape kind of going downward. So I'm going to try and recreate that. Like I said before, it ain't going to be perfect like that. 
We're just going to a slight cat eye, nothing dramatic like that. And that's it. We're gonna do a little bit of our bottom lid only to about halfway. So I'm gonna do my other eye off camera, but if you can see kind of how, how it reshaped my eye a little bit. And I'm gonna do my other eye, finish my eyes, including my lashes, and that's them. Went ahead and did my lashes off camera because you know how that goes. And I'm just gonna put on some blush and some lipstick, just a pinky blush. Same thing I used for my eyelids. I could not find that kind of pink that I wanted in my palette, but blush can be very versatile. So I've got some blush on now. And again, lip color. It's called Mother and it's by Kat Von D. I think I've mentioned before that her lipstick actually smells like Cadbury eggs. So they are a delight. And there's a lot of cool colors in that line too. That's the completed makeup look. And I'm gonna put my wig on and let's see how it all looks together. Get my costume on and then we'll go for photos. joining me today. I hope you had a great time, learned a little bit about the sensational pop artist Juk and her iconic swan dress, which my dad said wasn't a costume or didn't sound like a costume. He didn't say it wasn't a costume, but you know, it's that time of year. It's springtime. It's the perfect costume for the time of year. And it doesn't matter if you're wearing it to a Halloween costume ball. You might be wearing it to an Oscar party, which they have over at the Tampa Theater every year. Or even if you're just wearing it for a Comic-Con, this dress, people will know who you are. Because like I said, it's probably one of the most famous that's ever walked the red carpet. So I hope you loved it. If you are loving these videos, please like, subscribe and share. And if you loved this Academy Award dress from 2001, you're gonna love my Lady Gaga meat dress that I did a couple weeks ago. I'll be back with more costumes. Um, now it's gonna be the, about the first of the month that I put out a new costume because it got backed up because of last month. I was having technical difficulties when my, when my video was supposed to come out. So the first week of every month, I'm going to have a costume and you won't wanna miss it. So make sure you subscribe. I'll see you next time.